Hey everyone, this video is meant to help you with the Alex topic of finding values and intervals where the graph of a function is zero, positive, or negative. In particular, part C seems to be the one that sometimes trips students up. But let's go ahead and do A and B first. We'll get to C next. Is f of 5 negative? So remember, when you are seeing function notation like this, f of 5, whatever is in the parentheses, that's your input. That's telling you that x is equal to 5. And then it's asking you for the output. So it's asking you to find the corresponding y value when x is equal to 5. So looking at our graph, if x is equal to 5, looking at the graph, that's the coordinate right here. The y value there is positive 4. So f of 5 is equal to positive 4. So is f of 5 negative? Our answer here would be no. Part B asks, for which value or values of x is f of x equal to 0? Now remember, f of x is just a fancy way of writing y. So this question is really asking, where are the y values equal to 0? At what points on this curve are the y values 0? So when the y values are 0, we're basically looking for the x-intercepts of the graph. Where does this graph touch or cross the x-axis? So on this graph, we have an x-intercept right here. This is the coordinate 1, 0. See how the y value is equal to 0 here? and the x value is equal to 1. So which value of x is y equal to 0? Your answer here would be the answer of x equals 1. However, on Alex, I believe you're just going to type in the value of 1 for part b. And finally, part c, for which value or values of x is f of x less than 0? So again, f of x being less than 0 is basically asking you to find where on the graph are the y values less than zero. So if you think about the coordinate plane and think of the four quadrants, first, second, third, and fourth, think about where you would be located if the y values are less than zero. That means that the y values are negative. So first, if we're looking for where the y values are negative, that means that we would be down here in the third or the fourth quadrants. In other words, the y values are going to be less than zero when we are below the x-axis. So another way of asking this question, this question is really asking what intervals or what parts of this graph are below the x-axis. So if I highlight the portions of the graph below the x-axis, on this example, we see there's just one piece of the graph that is below the x-axis. And it looks like that piece of the graph goes from an x value of negative 3 to an x value of positive 1. So we're looking at an x interval from negative 3 to positive 1. But now we need to determine whether we want to include or not include these two values. In other words, we have to decide whether or not to use parentheses or brackets. So that requires a little bit more analysis. It's not quite as simple as just looking at the inequality sign. I don't want you to look at this less than sign and assume that there's going to be parentheses on both of these. That's not going to be necessarily true. So we are going to have to do a little bit more analysis at these uh, coordinates. So take a look at this left-hand endpoint. The coordinate here is negative 3, comma, negative 2. So the question is, is the y value less than 0 here? So is this y value less than 0? And the answer is yes. So we want to include this point. We'll include this x value of negative 3 by using a bracket. Because when x is equal to negative 3, the result is a y value that is definitely less than 0. Now let's look at x equals 1. So at this coordinate here, the coordinate is 1, 0. So again, we're looking at the, the y value. Is the y value here less than 0? 
And the answer here is no, this value is actually equal to zero. So because the y value here is not less than zero, we don't want to include x equals one. So therefore, our answer for part C would actually be a bracket on negative three. So we include x equals negative three, but it would be a parenthesis on one. We are not going to include x equals one. So moral of the story here, you really have to look at the y values and look at the inequality to see whether or not that inequality is true or not. If it is a true statement, then you could include the value. But if it's a false statement, then you do not want to include the value.